So this is the the contextual questions, which is you know uh, we are uh, one almost a whole week away from end. So no one's done it yet. <laughs> and uh, uh, so this is continuation of what I've been doing with the perplexity asking perplexity our um, conceptual questions, and I did some uh, multiple choice questions last time. And uh, this is mainly me uh, trying to keep up with what's the state of the art. Since uh, generative AI, it's fairly new. Uh, there are um, certain things that it enables you to do. Uh, it might be a good learning tool at some point. Maybe it is even now. And on the flip side, um, there's a potential for people to abuse it. So I just do what for many different uh, varied reasons, I want to just to keep, uh, keep, keep at the forefront of the state of the art. So, um, so these are the conceptual questions you will be answering by the end of the week. Let me ask these uh, now and see how well perplex the answers. And I get that um, many people uh, right now at the beginning of the week might not have read through the chapter and these questions are a little bit outside of what you're comfortable with. Watch it later <laughs> when you <laughs> have covered them. Uh, so let me ask these questions. And I'm gonna just do, oh, yeah, it's fine. I, I'm just gonna start a new thread because I've had some odd issues when a thread have gotten too long, it would just, uh, um, it would just be, become goofy. So I'm just gonna start a new thread each time. So, okay, this is the first question. It comes from the textbook. I slightly modified it for my purposes. Um, so let me actually read the question. Three examples of that. Okay. Um, that is not work in scientific sense. You know, let me check all this because, um, you know, work as everyday language thing, um, it it might have basically nothing to do with the mechanical work. And there are certain things where you can, if you think about it carefully, you can connect it to some kind of mechanical work we would describe. So, uh, is energy transferred or changed? If so, how is that without doing work? So, some of the examples, I'm writing something down. Uh, uh, I guess to the, to the degree that the pencil moves and but here's the thing, the energy doesn't get transferred to the sheet of paper. It's not as though the sheet of paper changes the mechanical energy or chemical energy. So uh, this second part is definitely not right. So the, you know, the first part I can imagine, I'm holding a pen or pencil and moving it. Yeah, I'm giving it mechanical energy. But the sheet of paper with something written on it that doesn't really have all that much more energy than um, than before I wrote something on it. So the second part is quite right. Um, this is not considerably independent because the force exerted by your hand is not directly causing the, okay, yeah, the paper is not being displaced. Also, it's not getting any energy. The energy transfer, of course. Yeah, um, it's not the best example, mainly because on the basis that you know, paper didn't gain any energy. I, I would have been fine with the, uh, there is no transfer of energy. So it's just a uh, kind of conflict between the everyday meaning of work, like, you know, office work, uh, kind of paper work kind of work. That is a one way people say the word work, but uh, in a physics class, the mechanical work, it, it, uh, it has to involve a force times a displacement somehow. Okay. Doing hard work on a subject to improve grades, yeah, it's the same deal. Let's decide how to uh, mental effort and you know, one, two, three, two, three, two, three. yeah, yeah. Uh, now, so here there is an interesting thing. So your brain does use uh, chemical energy, the food energy, the um, you know the metabolic energy. Um, and when you think super hard, I think there's some study that will show. I mean, human brain uh, uses like a, a third, a quarter of the calorie that your body uses. So um, there's definitely energy consumed there. Lots of information. It doesn't. Right. Um, if anything, I guess you could talk about energy changing form into a thermal energy, your body heat or other waste energy, but not the mechanical work. Uh, completing day-to-day -day tasks and coming home. Yeah. I guess they are all doing the kind of, they're describing the kind of work that you get paid for. 
Um, so let's see if I can ask for another example. Uh, can you um, describe a kind of workout uh, that someone might do in a gym that doesn't involve mechanical work? So this is uh, um, the model answer to this follow-up question would uh, um, Mention some sort of like extension exercise, like holding things in place for a long time. Because in a macroscopic sense, it wouldn't involve mechanical work. But yeah, that again is quite good. But yeah, so it says a play. Or it is only forced to maintain position. Yeah, so displacement still requires energy. Yeah. And uh, there's an interesting description of this in certain textbook. I forget if it's uh, in. Our textbook. So uh, let me see if I if I ask a follow-up question here, if it'll give the that explanation. Uh, so uh, how does uh, this type of exercise use up energy if uh, there is no displacement? Sure, energy consumption in static exercises. Yeah, yeah, muscle control. Yeah, there's a, a, a micro movement of your muscle, and there is actually force times the displacement there. So, um, so that's where actual mechanical energy, mechanical work gets done. Yeah, that, that's good. Um, I, I think you do need to kind of be a little bit insistent about asking a follow up question to not end up with something boring where every single example is the same. Um, but otherwise, it's doing okay, especially if you have some additional, you know, like a, a, can you give, can you give me three more examples of work that doesn't involve mechanical work? And then I'm sure it'll, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure it'll give some examples that's uh, different from the other, yeah, yeah, holding a heavy object without moving it. Um, that, Kind of goes with a static exercise, flexing your muscle. Yeah, again, steady exercise. Are it breathing? Um, I mean, depends on what you are looking at. If you are looking at your entire body, sure, your entire body isn't going anywhere. But if you are looking at your diaphragm or your stomach, then something is moving. That. But you know, I mean, it. I, you can make an argument for it, that if you look at your entire body, yeah, you are not moving, going. Okay, that's enough for that question. Let's uh, uh, go to the next question. Um, yeah. Okay. Imagine it all. Um, so in this class, we really have only two conservative forces uh, that we deal with now because the. GPT-4 doesn't have a context, it'll probably give um, conservative forces like electrical force. Oh, but I am surprised that it's not gonna ask, it might actually give me the two exact examples that I'm thinking of. Um, it's, it's, yeah, giving gravitational force, gravitational potential energy near the surface of Earth, that's fine. Because we haven't covered the Newton's law of universal gravitation yet, and spring force is good. And I imagine if I asked for additional examples of conservative force, then it might actually start to bring in electro, electric force, magnetic force, and other examples. So non conservative friction, air resistance. Um, and uh, I want you to ask, uh, yeah, apply the force. Those are kind of easy examples of non conservative force because you can see them actually changing mechanical energy. So they kind of fit into the box that you think of as non-conservative force. Let me uh, ask you a couple follow-up questions. One, um, two forces that a lot of people tended to associate with the conservation of energy, but it might surprise you. So are, the, are normal force and tension force conservative forces? That's one question. 
And if it knows what it's talking about, it should say, no, they are not conservative forces. Yeah, they are not conservative forces. Um, yeah. So the important thing is the path to independence and normal force and tension force. Don't satisfy those because they are the forces that don't have any formulas attached to them. They are there to enforce a constraint. Normal force makes it that objects cannot dig into a surface. Tension force maintains a distance between two objects. So, yeah, so neither of them are conservative forces. Now, in most circumstances, let's see. Uh, yeah, the normal force may not do any work. Like if a surface is stationary and as things are moving, normal force is perpendicular to that force. So when you calculate work, which is what we are covering this way, you know, the dot product, between the force, normal force and the displacement, that's a zero. So normal force often don't do work. So that would be one reason why often people associate it with being, things being conserved, but it technically is in a conservative force. And same thing with the tension. When things are moving in a circular path, then, uh, then yeah, the tension force may do zero work for the same reason. The displacement and the direction of tension force are perpendicular. But uh, it doesn't make it a conservative. So that's good. Uh, let me ask the second follow-up question. Um, so uh, can you give me three more examples of conservative force? Um, they should make it go outside of what we cover in this class. Uh, skip. Uh, I wanted to squirm for a bit. Yeah, electrostatic force which you cover in physics 4b, magnetic force, which you cover in physics 4b. Magnetic force is actually interesting how it's conservative. Central force, sure, um, that covers both electrostatic and gravitational force. It's a kind of a, a type of, well, it's a kind of a, <laughs> well, central forces are conservative forces that act along the line joining centers of two interacting bodies. An example is gravitational force. Yeah, I think that's a good illustration. So let me look at the last question here. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste. So um, it cannot watch the video, but it, there might be enough context around the video that it can actually um, answer as if it uh, watched the video. So, yeah. <laughs> I think based on my past experience, it will it should be able to guess the situation well enough, even though it can't watch a video. Because one, this is on YouTube. So. Oh wait. Uh, more specific. Okay, so in the video, the professor illustrates conservation of energy with a large pendulum which he breaks a glass pane. Um, and then he tries it um, with the ball being um, released uh, right next to his chin. And he knows where the video is coming from, it's on YouTube. Um, Not a good start. Yeah, I, I think it's basically the limitation of the fact that you can't watch the video. So in the glass pane example, the ball isn't released from a higher height. It's pushed away. That's a key part, but, uh, but I think uh, it, it's trying to guess and it's not guessing well. That's also not correct. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I think this is the kind of question. It's hard for GPT four to do well, just because it. Um, okay, that part is actually good. Some energy has been lost. Yeah, that's probably good. Yeah. yeah. Well, when it comes to trying to refer to details of the video, yeah, I don't think. <laughs> So where GPT would do well. Also, I haven't used the newer version of ChatGPT that can uh, analyze images. 
I probably should look at that at some point. Um, for this semester, since I started out with the perplexity, I'll stick with it for the purpose of um, some sense of continuity. And also, um, it for most of what um, one might do in a class like this, uh, word-based question and answer covers a lot. So, um, even though I do want you to learn how to use graphical problem-solving tools like the like drawing the free body diagram.